How's it going YouTube? It's Pilot Flame and we're back with the Game Week 5 review. We're going to check out how well my team did as well as the Game Week 6 preview. Uh, I have some bad weather coming to my area so we're going to be looking to see if we can squeeze them both into one because uh, I'm probably going to lose power at some point today and Thursday and then by that time uh, won't make so much sense doing the video because Fantasy Premier League uh, kicks back off again this Friday uh, with the Southampton game. Um, I believe they played Bournemouth. I could be wrong, but uh, yeah, let's uh, let's uh, jump right into it. So, just swapping over to the main screen here. So this was how my team did all at the start. You can see all of the uh, my game week points, my overall points, and my rank all the way up the top there. Um, Title says Game Week 6 Preview, but we're doing the 5 review as well. We're going to look over how my differentials did, how my clean sheet panned out, and how my transfers made out. All of which were rubbish, by the way. Um, so let's see what, we can, what we're looking at here. So we got Pope. Uh, he's got uh, just, just 3 points. Didn't expect a crazy amount because I always had a feeling that Brighton would score, but... I wanted the clean sheet. I knew this was a fixture that he could potentially get it in. Um, but, uh, yeah, a bit bit unfortunate there. Um, Robertson, obviously doing doing uh, quite well, getting an assist, although they did concede the clean sheet, so not great there. But he did get the assist this time, finally, um, and it wasn't Trent. Um, so it was quite good there. Uh, Digne was... Getting forward, but they conceded three goals, so that's bad. And then he got a yellow, so he needed zero. I just needed one point from him to get 60 this week. That's all I was hoping for, and he couldn't even get me that, but that's that's fine. Uh, Man City losing to Norwich. Obviously, not many people would have bet against uh, Man City to um, to win. Uh, Zinchenko obviously only getting one point, uh, conceding uh, three goals. Obviously, news is two for conceding... Um, conceding two plus goals as long as it's not four uh, so losing the clean sheet then losing additional points so him only getting one point there wasn't bad however we'll come on to who got those points in the end which is fine by me uh lundstrom uh they had a goal uh, ruled out by var uh, against southampton and southampton scored so obviously only getting two points there a bit disappointing uh was ex kind of expecting a clean sheet there uh, Liverpool obviously doing quite well. Salah getting his goal in the end. Obviously, Mane was the better asset this week, uh, getting two. Salah getting just the one. My boy, Son Aldo, coming through. Uh, already got his price rise already. Um, yeah, I should have probably captained him now that, now that uh, you know hindsight's twenty twenty. But uh, yeah, he's looking uh, looking on fire. I mean, Spurs get off to an early start like that son is usually in the mix and that's why i got him and then everyone's gonna be thinking well how do i have this premium midfielder spot and i'm gonna have him for all of these nice fixtures right here um so and we'll just keep him in and hopefully he does damage against all those teams um because Spurs are more adept at uh, scoring than United are. So they should do a little bit better against Leicester. Albeit it is away from home. It's a bit trickier. Southampton at home should be uh, pretty quick work. Brighton should be pretty quick work. Uh, and Watford if they're going to attack like they did against Arsenal. Spurs have a bit more sense when it comes to playing uh, out from the back. So not going to have any problems there. Sterling obviously not scoring uh, one of City's two goals. Um, he was my captain choice for this week. I thought City would obviously demolish Norwich. That didn't come to fruition. And De Bruyne obviously only getting one point because he didn't start. So the transfer was a kind of a unlucky. But De Bruyne will probably start um, this coming weekend. Uh, assuming uh, nothing. Uh, he comes out of the Champions League fixture unscathed. Um, so uh, let's hope for that. And then the highlights apart from Son... Uh, were Cantwell and Pookie. Pookie getting a goal assist. Uh, and then he's got these good runner fixtures now. Um, I decided to play Greenwood, actually, and Cantwell was my first sub. So Greenwood didn't end up playing, which actually worked out. Um, so it would have been a five-point swing um, if, let's say, Greenwood had come on as a sub. 
But um, the way the game was going in the United game, uh, Greenwood was probably not going to come on. He was probably going to bring on the likes of Chong because he was going to match the width that Leicester was providing. Um, but Cantwell got obviously getting an assist. Uh, yeah, it was uh, really good. Really, really good. So um, that's why I was fine with Zinchenko conceding two goals, um, or three, rather. Um, assuming that Puki and Cantwell were part of one of them. Then it would break even. And be actually slightly in my favor, especially if Cantwell came in, which he did. In terms of the bench, obviously Greenwood didn't play, Button didn't play, Soyuncu got his uh, two against United, and Wickham's obviously out injured. Um, so if we want to go down the line, I got my notebook here. I got my notebook. We're going to look at what I said for uh, for all the different picks. So for my, my, uh, my picks here, uh, I didn't do too hot. I picked Hugo Lloris in goal, which was the only one I actually got right. Um, Hugo Lloris got a clean sheet. Um, we can actually take a look at the all the different fixtures and how they played out as well. So for Spurs, 4-0. Obviously, Hugo Lloris getting the clean sheet. We can look at how many saves he made. He made six. So Hugo Lloris ending up with a total of eight points. So that was a good pick on my part. Um, didn't make quite make it into the bonus, but um, uh, good good game nonetheless for for Hugo Lloris. Next one was Burnley. I picked Tarkowski in that game. Um, Tarkowski obviously not getting involved in any of the returns and wasn't anywhere close on the bonus, mainly because Burnley scored late on, so that was kind of a dud. But Burnley kind of didn't play up to their to their potential against Brighton. I think Burnley's a better team than Brighton. But obviously, Burnley maybe not as uh, fortuitous away from home. I then picked Tielemans against my own team. I'll take the United win over Tielemans doing well. Um, I was very confused as to what Brendan Rodgers was actually doing. I was expecting him to play a 4-3-3 against us. Because uh, it stylistically would have been better against United's 4-2-3-1. Because you can just have the midfield three of Ndidi, Madison, and... And um, uh, Tielemans, um, all surrounding the likes of Mata and Matic and just swarming them and just getting in these pockets of space. What he ended up doing was putting Madison out on the left wing and playing a 4 1 4 1 and leaving Vardy isolated, which just made it too easy for our center backs to block Vardy. It was a scare in the opening four minutes, but apart from that, wasn't really much, uh, <coughs> much else they, they, they really did. Um, and when United swapped Fred in for Matic, who should probably never play another game, honestly, unless it's like a game that doesn't really matter, like in Carabao Cup or something like that, because he was awful. Fred came on, only had 20 touches of the ball, but looked lively, tried to make four passes, try, you know, brought energy. And then Chong was, a, was something that I was kind of a bit skeptical at first, but it actually worked out because he provided the width to match the, their change in formation. When they brought on Iozzi Perez, Paris, who went out to the um, went out to uh, one of the flanks, uh, they swapped Damari Gray, I believe it was, to the left hand side, put Iozzi Paris out on the right, and then they resumed the four three three, which I thought they were going to do from the start, um, with the likes of either Albrighton or Iozzi Paris. So that kind of went down the toilet. And then the last one was Mason Greenwood. Obviously, he didn't play, but it was the thought that counts. That was a long shot, anyway. Looking at the clean sheet, I said Liverpool. Unfortunately, they conceded to Newcastle early on. It was a great goal by Willems. Great goal. Um, all the goals in this game were actually really good. Uh, Firmino was obviously on a, an absolute Maddie that day. Um, really, really, really uh, good stuff from Liverpool and a like, good goal from Newcastle, um, which they actually held their own for a little, for quite a long time, longer than I expected. And then if we go down the Let's see how many of the actual fixtures I got right. So I said 4-0 uh, Liverpool over Newcastle was 3-1. So still got the win there. Um, so what we'll do is if I got the result right, I get one point. If I get the exact score right, I get three points. If I um, don't get it right, I get zero points. So 3-1 Liverpool, so I get one point because it was only, only that. 
Burnley, Brighton 1-1, one, one, I said 2, no Burnley, so I don't get any points for that. Uh, Man United, Leicester, I said 2-2, two, two. Man United 1-0, one, one, so I don't get any points for that. I said Sheffield United 2-1 win. I got the one goal for Southampton, right? But not the result. So no points for that, unfortunately. I said Spurs will win 3-1. They won 4-0. So that's one point there. I said Chelsea would win 3-1. They won 5-2 over Wolves. Tammy Abraham getting a hat-trick in that as well. Continuing to be on form. Mason Mount picking up a goal. But also getting injured in the Champions League game yesterday. Uh, today being Wednesday of this recording. Um, yesterday being Tuesday uh, when they played against Valencia. So I get one point there. I got the uh, the spread almost right, but and then Man City 5-0 over Norwich. Well, I got the f number of goals right in the game, but obviously not the right result. Um, Bournemouth 3-2, I said, over Everton. Uh, it was 3-1, so I was close. I was very close, so I got one point for that. Uh, Watford and Arsenal, I said it would be 1-1. It was 2-2, so I got the result right there. Uh, so... And then Aston Villa West Ham, I said 1-1. It was 0-0. No, no. So I got six points in total. All of them, um, for the most part, just not correct scores, but close enough in the end. Highlights of the week. So basically, obviously, Son doing really well for, for Spurs. Salah and Mane returning in this game. Leicester underperforming against United, which was overall just a bad game. Um, clean sheets not being kept by common defenders for, for most people. Um... Obviously, the, no, the only clean sheets was for Southampton defense, United defense, and Spurs defense, as well as Aston Villa and West Ham. But for the major defenders, like if you didn't have Robertson, your defender only got two points in this game. If you didn't have, um, if you had City defense, you probably got one point or maybe zero, depending on if you got a yellow card. Um, Digne obviously got zero. He was the most common uh, Everton player because he got a yellow. Um, was, and if you had Aston Villa as I said, if you had Heaton and maybe Mings or somebody like that, then uh, you were looking pretty good after after that game. Um, so overall, the average this week was 52, um, and a game week rank of 1.9 million. Um, I made the one transfer, which was De Bruyne, which obviously didn't work out, um, and the average points 52 to my 59. So I went up about 200k places because I was sitting at. Um, just under 900k uh, last time so we can view the game week history here so I went from 876k right here to 665k so yeah 200k nice little green arrow um, so we'll slowly need to creep ourselves back the way up before like game week 10 to 12 um, and then we'll see where we are position wise um, so yeah let's look on to this week so this week, let's look at the fixtures. So like I said, the kickoff on, it is on Friday. Southampton do play Bournemouth, so I did get that right. I know a little bit something about football, hopefully. Um, no, I'm just playing. Uh, Southampton, Bournemouth, uh, early kickoff. That's the... That's the early, uh, or the early week kickoff on Friday. <laughs> Usually it's West Ham that plays in that fixture. At least I think they initially started it. So let's write down game week six. So let's go through all the results. Uh, Southampton Bournemouth, I think that this is going to be a 3-1 to Bournemouth. I think their win over Everton is going to spur them on to go and beat Southampton as well, even if it is away from home. Then we have Leicester versus Spurs. I think Spurs will win 3-1. Um, I think Kane will probably get back on the score sheet. Um, I think Vardy, as he does typically against the top six teams, will score. And I think Brendan Rodgers will relearn from his mistakes but not be good enough for the likes of Spurs. Burnley at home to Norwich. I think I can see this being a 1-1. Um, I don't see Burnley keeping a clean sheet, but I think they may get one at, one ahead and they may want to just like kind of sit back, but Norwich will be good enough to get a goal in this one. So I think it's going to be a draw of some kind. Everton at home to Sheffield United. I'm not sure about Everton, but since they're at home, 
I'll say that they win this one 2-0 over Sheffield United. Dinier getting his clean sheet back. Man City versus Watford. Man City a different beast, obviously, at home. Um, they're going to be against Watford, who are coming off a really, uh, really good win. But they're going to try to play football, which is what you don't want to do against Man City. Um, more so than what Norwich did, even though Norwich played really well. And they were very controlled, even with their injuries. I think Man City is going to definitely... Um, bounce it back and I think they're going to win this game 3-0 keeping that clean sheet I think the Pep will drill them uh, learning from their mistakes uh, in their game against Norwich and then uh, correcting those issues Newcastle uh, at home to Brighton I think uh, this is going to be a snooze fest. I think it's going to be a no-no. I think it's going to be a no-no. That's because both teams are have cooled off in terms of uh, goals. I think both of them are going to try not to lose the game, which will probably end up in a, either a no-no or one-one of some kind. I'm going to go zero no-no. Crystal Palace versus Wolves. Um, Wolves away from home, not as good. Palace coming off a massive defeat against uh, Spurs. Um, I think uh, I think Wolves are going to win this. I think Wolves will win this. I think it's going to be a 2-1 Wolves in typical uh, park the bus fashion. Um, they're going to hit them on the break a couple of times. Palace are not going to be ready for it. Uh, and the likes of Jimenez or Jota or somebody like that will get on the end of it. Maybe a Ruben Neves free kick of some kind. Uh, West Ham versus Man United. Um, I think West Ham are terrible um but west ham has always been a bogey team for manchester united um even back in the ferguson days um i still think if we get the right players back if we have the right energy coming out of the europa league game i think united should win this game i'm gonna say united is going to win this game three to one <laughs> moving on to the Last two fixtures of the week on Sunday, we have Arsenal versus Aston Villa. I think that this is going to be another Watford game. I think this could end up being a 2-2. Um, my reasoning behind that is because I'm still not sure. This is assuming that Tierney and Bellerin are not back yet, which I don't believe they are. Um, and I think it could be another Watford game. I think it could be an early lapse in judgment by the Arsenal defense, even at home. It doesn't matter where they are. They've conceded the most goals by far out of any of the top six teams with mistakes since the start of last season um, I believe it, this is to quote the stat from the football terrace uh, it was 14 mistakes that they made whereas like the most of the you know, top six teams made is like, is like four or five that have resulted in a um, uh, in conceding um, so yeah that should be uh, should be interesting and then Chelsea versus Liverpool. I think Liverpool obviously losing to uh, Napoli uh, away from home. Not going to be. They play their full strength squads. They could be could be tired for that, but they'll be up for this game. Um, they'll definitely be up for this game. I can see Liverpool winning this um, in a close battle, two to one. So those are all my predictions for this week uh, let's go with my clean sheet so based off my results here the only people I have clean sheets is Everton Man City Newcastle and Brighton so I'm gonna back Everton this week to get a clean sheet versus Sheffield United and there's my all of them right there all the different scores with the clean sheet there and then now let's go into um, let's go into differential picks so um, let's see let's let's go to differential picks here so for a goalkeeper I think we can pick uh, let's go where's Newcastle Considering I think it's going to be a no no draw. 0.9% own. We'll go with the goalkeeper to be Debravka from, from Newcastle. 
I think he can get a clean sheet this week versus Brighton. Um, even though Newcastle aren't the most adept, but they'll be up for it because they know this is the type of game they need to not lose if they want to stay up, obviously, in the Premier League. Dubravka only being 0.9% owned um, is was pretty good against Liverpool save-wise. Uh, kept them in it uh, for longer than they probably should have. He is a bit expensive, 5 million, but he could be one of those ones where maybe... Brighton get a, uh, a penalty early on or something like that or he gets a few saves early on and he saves it um, who knows anything could probably happen in those really really uh, drawn out games but it could be Brighton on the offensive and Newcastle kind of sit back sit back sit back and then nick a goal late on and then they keep the clean sheet and Dubrovka racks up like six plus saves um, and ends up getting some bonus points so we'll go with Martin Dubrovka for For Chelsea, we're going to go with, F F I can't even pronounce that first name, Fikayo Tamori, I believe it is. He's the one who scored uh, versus Wolves. Um, so we will go with him as our differential for defense, 0.5% owned. Looks like he he and Rudiger are the two main starters now that he's come in. Um, and one of part of the Youth Academy as well. Obviously, really good strike as 45 million now it's definitely a risk because he's only obviously started the last two games with the injuries down at the back but if this continues and he keeps this kind of level up and he's this type of threat from long range or threat on corners um you know and he's still learning their trade with the partnership between him and rudiger could be something to look out for definitely could be something to look out for so he's going to be my def um, my defender differential as it is a very big differential as he might not play because obviously he's only started twice. Um, he did start against Valencia as well. So that's also another big kind of, you know, unsure unsure thing there. Um, and they're also up against Liverpool. So it makes it even, you know, more of a punt. Uh, but who knows? Chelsea could win 2-0 and he could score off a corner or something. Who knows? That's why they're called differentials. Uh, into the midfield. Let's see what we got. Um, who are we going to go for... A midfield differential here I think we can look to the likes of let's go let's go see what Ax Aston Villa is looking at Grealish and McGinn let's go for let's go for Jack Grealish um, He's 4.3% owned. Uh, is playing Arsenal. Would probably relish in a type of game like this. Play against tougher opposition. To really put his mark. Down on the game. Um, it is a game away from home. So he hasn't done what, typically well away from home. But um, it is something where he can be like. I'm up against tough opposition. We've gotten our few games into the Premier League. And then he can just go. Um, and control the midfield because Arsenal's midfield is not good at all, especially if they keep playing Shaka, which I don't, un I just don't understand why they keep doing it. Um, so, yeah, not really sure what they're, what they're trying to accomplish there. Um, and then lastly, we need a forward. We need a forward. Who are we gonna go with this week? Um, <laughs> not really many good forward options this week that are not really well owned, as it were. Um, but we can look to the likes of Everton. We can go to we can go to Everton and we can check. So not starting in the in, in the in the game versus Bournemouth. So maybe Moise Keane comes back in and gets uh, gets a goal or two uh, versus uh, uh, versus uh, Sheffield United maybe uh, probably a more physical more physical game maybe needs his type of physicality up front uh, maybe more of an aerial duel versus Sheffield United we'll have to see but I'm gonna go with him 2.5 percent owned I think he's doing the right things he just needs more game time he's got the one start versus Wolves where he did get an assist um so i think he just needs to just start 
because he seems to be doing, um, you know, better than uh, what Calvert Lewin's doing. Yeah, Calvert Lewin got the uh, got the goal versus Bournemouth, but obviously overall not great. More of a consolation goal than anything. Um, that was his first return as well, um, and he's been starting the majority of the game. So, um, so we'll have to we'll have to see on that. But those are my those are my clean sheets and differentials. So we got Everton on the clean sheet. Pretty hard to see there. Uh, but it's Everton on the clean sheet, Dubrovka in goal, Tomori of Chelsea down the back. Uh, and then we have Jack Grealish from Aston Villa going against Arsenal. And then Moise Keane uh, at home to Sheffield United. And we shall see how they go. Uh, I'll put a tweet out with those, uh, those picks there um, and see how we go. So, let's talk potential transfers. So we have one free transfer this week, um, and I think it's going to be a boring week. I don't think I'm going to use it, <laughs> unfortunately. Um, but what we can do is we can look at some of the some of the increase in value that we that we received over the over the last week. So Pope still gaining that point one. Digne now we can sell him at point one more. Uh, Soyanchu has gone up by point one as well, which is quite nice. I expect Robertson to return back to seven million at some point. Zinchenko, his price may go back down, but we don't earn anything on him as of yet. Uh, Lundstrom, 4.3. Salah still the same. Sterling staying at 12.3. De Bruyne still 9.8 versus the 9.7 we paid for him. Cantwell has gone up uh, immensely to 4.9, starting at 4.5 in the season. We bought him at 4.7. Son has already gone up once. Um, I expect that to go up even more. And Puki has just continued to climb in price. Um, obviously scoring for fun so in terms of actual transfers I don't think we're gonna be making any um, I don't think we're gonna be making any I could make one which is like Wickham out but I don't think Wickham's gonna be going down because a lot of people just have him as a placeholder and they're just gonna sit there um, so I mean if we look at his his ownership it's 5.1 percent earned and a lot of people just have him to just sit there um, as a blank because the only real one that kind of comes off the bench is uh, if we look at uh, forwards uh, 4.6 4.5 yeah, I mean you got uh, you got Connolly you got Greenwood but apart from that no real 4.5 forward plays um, so it's just one of those things where he's just probably gonna sit there until I wild card and then I get somebody either to replace him completely or just have another four point x to just sit there but uh yeah i don't think any transfers are really needed this week because if we look at our if we look at my team for this week this is kind of how we're shaping up so we're gonna have pope and goal versus uh norwich at home obviously it feels bad that i have to play my my goalkeeper versus uh two of my uh, two of my attackers, but obviously if Pope concedes but makes a bunch of saves um, and, and Pookie and Cantwell are part of it, then obviously it's always better because uh, the amount of net points gained is, is better. So if Pope concedes two, ends up getting three saves, he ends up with two points and let's say uh, Pookie scores one, Cantwell gets an assist on the other, then we're already, you know, that's 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 a lot of points right there. So, um, And usually when um, Norwich score, Pookie's involved. So always a benefit there. Dini at home to Sheffield United. I need a clean sheet from him because uh, defense has been bad. Defense has been bad and I don't expect Liverpool to keep a clean sheet versus Chelsea and who knows what City's going to do even though I said they'll win 3-0. Um, I'm not sure about Zinchenko and he could be on bar time as well because Mendy is in the waiting. Obviously like I said the two Norwich guys uh, Cantwell and Puki. uh them getting the uh, nods almost certainly against Burnley away. We have Son Lester away. That should be an okay fixture for him. The Watford at home. I currently have the captaincy on Sterling. It just makes the most sense because it's at home. Um, I'll have to see who plays in City's team today versus. I can't remember who they play actually. Um, let me actually check that while I'm. While I'm thinking of it, let's see who plays. So, Man City 
they play Champions League today. Oh, Shakhtar Donetsk. So they'll probably won't play anyone that crazy. They probably won't play anyone that crazy. Um, so either one of these two will almost certainly play. Salah, obviously in. Um, Salah's obviously in. Um, Sheffield United, I don't think they're going to do well versus Everton. So I'm going to put Lundstrom in. Uh, because if they're conceding two, they're going to get the same amount of points as Green, what Greenwood would get. I obviously don't want to play Sionchu against Spurs because that just sounds scary. So I'll put Greenwood in in the event that he gets to start versus uh, uh, Astana on Thursday. And then does well enough to get a start versus West Ham. Because West Ham's obviously a weaker opposition. Um, so we'll have to see. This may change. I may just put Lundstrom in from the beginning and just hope it's a no-no or something like that. Who knows? Um, and then obviously Pookie up front, which makes the most sense. So that's how my bench is going to line up. Definitely Lundstrom first over Sionchu, and then Wickham is obviously going to be last. But the cabin is probably going to be on a city asset, um, almost certainly. And no transfers, because uh, I don't think I need to make any. I'll go into next week with two. And then we can look to potentially fix the Wickham issue or potentially... Uh, look at some fixture swings. Maybe Zinchenko is the one that has to make way because obviously, you know, Everton away is, you know, it's it's okay. It's not great. Wolves at home. We know Wolves have been quite adept at people, but by that time he could already be out the door. He could already be out the door. So we'll have to we'll have to see on that front. Everton fixtures, um, they're still quite good for a long period of time. So not really much changing there. Pope's fixture is obviously really good for a long period of time. So not really much changing needs to needs to be done. So Yonchu, we brought him in for a little bit. After this game, his fixtures are really good all the way up until um, the middle of the Christmas period. So that's that's looking looking okay there as well. Lundstrom, we're just going to keep him because he's an enabler. We just hope we don't have or have to play him because of this run is bad. Um, anyone that's probably good is this one here. Maybe this one. And that one there uh, versus West Ham, Watford, and Burnley. But uh, we'll have to see. We will have to see. But yeah. Thanks again for anyone who, who tuned in. And thank you to all the viewers um, out there. Let's swap over to the full view so you can see. Uh, see me. But um, yeah, so uh, overall, uh, uh, would we agree above average? So we went up 200k places, which is quite nice. Still have yet to use the wild card. Team's looking okay. We just need people to actually deliver, and I need to get a captaincy right again because that would be nice. Obviously, Sterling not getting the return that we wanted to with Norwich with a, you know, doing better than what I think most people had anticipated. Um, uh, shocked a lot of people also son doing well for us as a differential was quite key to our success last week and hopefully he can do the same again because if i just look at him quickly he's at 5.4 percent owned so he's still not highly owned and he could do damage against leicester as well but we'll have to see but wherever you are in the world have a good day have a good night and we will see you next week for the game week six review and game week seven preview Happy FPL, everyone. See you.